Here we go. The name of our team is Team No Prior Experience, which is kind of a motto of mine. You know, you should only do things that we don't really know how to do, I think, because that's how you learn life. Yeah, yes. And that's how you get the most adventure and the most excitement. Go, 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 go. It was the race of their lives. Team No Prior Experience took on one of the biggest challenges any amateur cyclist could ever dream of the race around Ireland. Three days with no sleep, cycling over 1,350 miles of open roads across some of Ireland's undefined largest mountain ranges. Four cyclists with a crew of eight defied all odds by showing that you really don't need prior experience when you've got bags of determination and a zest for life. It was the hilliest course imaginable. They basically went from Navan anti-clockwise around Ireland back to Navan again, but over every single mountain range in Ireland. Um, the Cooley Mountains, the Antrim Hills, the Blue Stack Mountains in Donegal, Connemara, um, the McGillicuddy Reeks in Kerry, uh, the Wicklow Hills, every mountainous region that you can imagine, uh, they pull us over. But it was really, really, really tough, but probably the most thrilling sporting thing I've ever done in my life. There are four of us racers. We're going to split into two pairs. Yeah, boys! And we're going to do, each pair is going to do four or five hours on, four or five hours off. This is what it's all about. Once we're on the road, riding, racing, passing that's teams, from the that's what it's all about. So far, so good. This is the easy bit. It's, it's tomorrow that will be uh, horrible. This section of the course is like, for anybody that knows anything about the, the Tour de France, this is like the Alps. We're two guys from Fermanagh, myself, and an old school friend of mine from Batora, Simon James from Balna Mallard, who is without doubt one of the fittest guys in Ireland, and I'm talking top 1%. His scores in the laboratory testing were bizarre. They were just off the scale, excellent. They were really incredible. The scientists couldn't believe it, that an amateur sportsman could hit that sort of level of fitness. Um, then we had a friend of ours, a university friend of ours from England called Rob Goldsmith, a brilliant club cyclist. We had a guy from Navin, called, um, from Dublin rather, called Colin Laverty. Again, a tremendous Irish club cyclist. And th those guys really got me through it, I mean, their level. I knew that I'd be okay on the sleep deprivation and the determination, I knew I had that in buckets, especially after having a baby. A few months before, you know, I was up in the middle of the night, it wasn't gonna phase me not sleeping. But I didn't have the same level of cycling ability that those three boys did, so they carried me through that. It was the most eclectic collection of crew. Crew and cyclists didn't know each other at all. It just seemed to come together. A football manager, Liam Beckett, Chris Kelly, a guy who's a cage fighting promoter, just people that I'd known from different walks of life who I knew had the, the, the sort of character that would, first of all, agree to do the thing. I mean, it's very hard to persuade someone to give up four days of their life to come down and drive around Ireland at 15 or 20 mile an hour without any sleep and get abuse from the cyclists for doing it. If they made a wrong turn, but these guys just all love a challenge. They're men after my own heart, have a zest for life. They wanted to do something new. They wanted to, to experience that sort of pressure and that sort of environment. And I'm just so glad they came on board. And you know, one of them, David Baird, 75, just again, still has that zest for life and that thirst for adventure, wanted to be a part of it. And I'm hoping that we re repaid them in some small way by actually winning the thing and giving them great memories to talk about. I knew they would never give up, it's not in my nature, but I did think at one stage we weren't going to win it. Uh, on the last day, the Ampost team really attacked and started cutting back. We had a 45 minute lead, and after the first two hours of the first day, of the last day, sorry, they'd cut that back to 30 minutes. So to lose 15 minutes over that period of time, we were getting really panicky. And Simon and I were really on our last legs. We were totally exhausted. We'd come over the Wicklow Mountains. We were absolutely knackered and we had so much more to go. And we weren't sure we would that much more left to give. So we had to sort of restructure our, our plan and our rota and just managed to get a bit of extra energy from somewhere and then extended the lead again. And it became clear in the last two hours that we weren't going to lose it. We've got 30 minutes to spur over the second place team. This means a hell of a lot to me to win this. Yeah! One of the proudest yeah. moments of my sporting life, I think, probably the proudest. To be the first winners of the race around Ireland and uh, it's my first ever cycle race as well. <laughs> Glass. I always say, you, you don't get this isn't a rehearsal. You get one go at life and you've got to make the most of it. That, 
I'm not particularly religious, but that would be one faith that I would subscribe to, is that you owe it to yourself to get as much out of this one chance of life that you have. And if you don't take it, and if you keep making excuses, you're just kidding yourself, and you're just depriving yourself of wonderful opportunities and wonderful moments. And yes, there are hard times that you go through in an event like that, but that is totally superseded by the thrill that we're still getting after it. You know, the pain is temporary and the glory of it and the fun and the happiness of it lasts forever.